Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I wanted to show a flip through of an altered book that I created and it is a bee theme. So on the uh, spine of the book I have the wonderful world of bees. So let's get started and I'll show you a flip through and I'll kind of explain what I did to create this book. This is an altered book and it was created from a uh, old book that was string bound. I started it about four years ago and I was following Lori Marie Jenkins on how to make altered books. And so that's how I learned how to do um, make the pages and uh, make the altered book. And so um, it's kind of been a labor of love that's been put aside here and there and I've com finally completed it. So let me show you what I've done. For my edges, I used my Crapodile Corner Chomper and I corner rounded all the top edges. I left the bottom square and the tops rounded. It just looks really pretty when it's sitting on the table to see those rounded edges. And one of the things I really like to do, I know I show this a lot in my videos that I don't like the color of edges of things. I'm taking an Ecoline brush pen, any brush pen would work, and I like to take each page and I like to edge the top, the corner, and then all the way down the sides with a color. This time I'm using black because I've got a black theme going in this book, but I'm going along that top edge and I'm going right down the corner and down the edge of each page individually. And to me, just those little details that you do to your book is what's going to make the finished product so much nicer. So when that's all done, look at the edges are nice and blackened instead of like underneath. See, they would normally be like this because I didn't do it underneath yet. But on top, see the difference? I did all the edges dark and it just makes it look so much more finished and nice. On the cover of the book is a uh, wooden frame with glass. It's etched glass with flowers. See if you can see those flowers on the etched glass. And this was a cover to a little ring box that my mom gave me for Christmas. She made a holder for my um, my inks for when I do dip pan and I took the lid off of it and I actually used screws to screw it to the front of my book. So I put it on the book with little tiny screws. So when you open the lid, you see the picture inside, which is a beautiful picture of bees and flowers. It's got a little black Velcro closure that holds it closed. And then I put the words on the spine, the wonderful world of bees. On the back is this beautiful image. I love this picture. It came from a Daphne's diary and it was made completely of paper. It's a bee that a lady does um, make cuts paper into little bitty pieces and makes all kinds of bugs and insects and animals and things. And it was just so beautiful. I put that on the back of the book. I did put a lot of texture. So it's got um, cheesecloth on it and then dry brushed gold paint over the cheesecloth to make that fun texture on the front. I love the texture. And then gold is all around the edges. So the base of the book was painted with black gesso. The cheesecloth was added with um, Mod Podge. Then when it dried, I dry brushed the gold over the book. And then I put gold over the edges of the frame as well. So that's the front of the book. I love this cover with this fun flipping frame. And then for the closure, I have Two of these little clips, they came from Hobby Lobby and they have chain on them. I've got chain, so they one is in the front, one's in the back. It chain holds it together with a chain. I hung a piece of chain with this beautiful bee. This came from Happy Mail from Mimi, so thank you Mimi for this beautiful bee. It adorns my bee book. So I can take the chain off like this and then look at my book. So I am going to explain a couple of the techniques that I used in this as I go along. I did want to say that I do take a brush pen and as I show you in all my paper doll videos that I hate edges, um, when I finish a book like an altered book, all the edges on the top, I make them all a color. This one I chose black as my base theme. So I went over all the edges of all the pages in black and I just think that that finishes off your book when you do it instead of it being all different colors and showing those white edges. So that's one tip is to use a brush pen and go over your pages. I also corner rounded all the top pages. So I used my Crocodile 
chomper, corner chomper, and I chomped the corners, and I only did it on the tops, not on the bottom. So I left the bottom squared, and I rounded all the top corners. It just makes it look so pretty when it's sitting on a table. It just really adds some fun visual appeal to it. So I used my corner chomper for that. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, matte gel medium. I do a lot of collage and I have tried every matte gel medium on the market. So I've tried uh, Liquitex, Golden, Blick, um, my favorite has always been Tri Art, and I've always um, given a link and shown you guys, hey, Tri Art is the best because I really loved it. Um, however, Tri Art has raised their price with all the inflation that's been going on, and it's really expensive. So I wanted to get something else that was completely out. Um, I wanted to thank my uh, follower, Denise. She gave a little donation in December, at the end of December on the 31st to start the new year off. And I was able to use that to buy a new jar of matte gel medium. And this time I went with the Crafters Workshop. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, probably they're the company that makes all the beautiful stencils and stencil paste. And I gave this. Um, matte gel medium a try and I love it. I like it even more than Tri Art and Tri Art has always been my go-to. So here's what it looks like and it's super, look at how super thick and creamy it is. And for collage, what I love best about it is it really holds down the image. It makes things nice and flat. I have had no wrinkling at all, even on thin papers and magazine papers when I've done collage. And when you put that layer over the top to really seal in whatever it is that you're putting down for collage, this dries so clear and matte that you don't even hardly see brush strokes or anything. You barely even know that you have matte gel medium over the top of whatever it is you put down. So I'm loving this. And thank you so much, Denise. Appreciate you very much. Okay, so now enough jibber jabber. Let me get on to the showing. So the first page here, <laughs> I love this page, has got uh, two girl images, lots of texture. This was done with a stencil and stencil paste. It was a stencil that goes circles all the way into the middle. So it's got this really fun textured circle with I put a B in the middle that I collaged on. My two girls with crowns with gems. The glasses, I put plastic behind the glasses to make them have lenses. And it's just really cute. And then I put queen bee and it's got a little bee in a circle here. So there's my queen bee page. And then it's got, this is uh, Nouveau Drops in a clear in orange marmalade. And when I dripped it down and let it dry, it looks like honey dripping. So you'll see that throughout the book. And this is the first, so I've got my wavy three card place here. See this cute place for putting cards. And this I made out of a file folder. So out of a book about nature, I took a whole section about bees and information about bees and put it all throughout my book. So this is what do bees eat? And then when you flip it open, there's um, the information about the dance that the bees do, which is so interesting. Lots of collaged images. And then about drone bees. So it's B facts and B information, and then it tucks into the pocket, but it also makes it look really cool with that big B on it. And then behind it is another one, and that's got a big B that was out of a magazine or a book, so you can see it's kind of shiny. And this one flips up, and the same thing. It's got collaged bits. This was cut from a little uh, die cut image. Um, this came from a, the die cut pack that I got for Christmas from my sister. And this is do uh, the queen bees rule the hive information about the queen bee. So that I put the queen bee down at the bottom. And there's another bee fact card that goes in the pockets, the wavy pockets that I created. So if you're new to altered books, to create these kind of pockets and things, you glue or Mod Podge um, pages of a book together to make sets and it makes them really stiff and sturdy and before I glued them down at the top I cut them in a wave with my dilutions ranger dilutions journaling block that has that wave edge I use that to make the wave edge 
and then glued them together at the top and clamped them to dry so that it makes wavy looking pockets. So that's how I created that. On this next page, super collaged. It's even got wire, so I put chicken wire on it. It's got a guy in a beekeeper's suit tending to his hives. It's got uh, pieces from a uh, vegetable bag. So, you know, that plastic that vegetables come in. I love that stuff. It's got gears, all kinds of texture stuff. Paint dripping down to make it look like honey. Here's a smoker, bee smoker, some bees. Uh, I use some stencils that look like honeycomb. And this is a a split tag page so it's tags actually it's two tags that create the page and then you split it in the middle and make double tags that flip so when you flip it to this page I've got this great big beautiful bee that came out of a juxtapose magazine um, that someone had sent me they knew that I love bee stuff so in some happy mail somebody sent me that big bee from a juxtapose I love that bee and then there's all kinds of collage stuff. So here's the definition out of a dictionary of a bumblebee. A bumblebee that I rubber stamped onto, um, onto a dryer sheet that had been used. And you take it out of the dryer and I stamped in archival ink. And then it's got flock on it to make the bee fuzzy. So there's a lot of texture and interest on that bee. There's more. This is mesh that came from... Um, I think an old, um, the bags that you used to put your lingerie in, in the dryer, it had fallen apart, but I saved it because I love the pattern on it. And that's that. Down the center to make my seam of my book was coming apart. I fixed it with um, cheesecloth, but I left it cheesecloth colored instead of painting it because I just really thought it looked nice. Um, so here's another definition about honeybee, more texture. The definition of pollinate, the de definition of honeycomb. So that's a fun thing to do is take take an old dictionary and go through the dictionary and find things that relate to what you're creating. For this, it was bees. So anything that was bee related, I took the definitions and cut them right out of the dictionary and mod podged them down on my page to collage them and make them part of the book. So this next one I showed in a video. This was in my Justine Paper Dolls. This was Beekeeper, Justine's beekeeping adventure. And I added her to the page. So she's got movable arms. She's holding a little dangling beehive. Her legs move. And it's the parts that were with it, these were are all on that kit. So there's the branch with the beehive and the plant that the bees get the pollen from. I popped up the little flowers, did a honey pot with honey. But I showed a video on this. Um, when I showed my Justine paper doll kit, I showed that. So I'll put the link to that if you want to see how I created this page and this Justine paper doll. There's a spinner, and that's in that little kit too. So on Embroidery floss, I've got bees that spin when you just take your fingers and spin it. I love that little spinner. And then behind it is a pocket in my book. And behind it, I've got a cute little card with bees. And then this cute thing was from some packaging. And I made it a flip that you flip open and it's got why do bees swarm. So it's got some more bee information in it. And it's just a fun way of having more bee information and I put it in that pocket behind the Justine page. So that's that page. The next page I created, this is what's called a tunnel. There are tunnel books and all kinds of tunnels. And let me stop here and quickly show you um, how to make a tunnel for your tunnel book. So I'll show you how I created this. I just thought I'd show this real quick. For the center of my altered book, I want to have a, um, a set of pages that are like a tunnel book t style of pages. So what I did was uh, to Mod Podge together book pages in two or three pages together and let them dry. And that makes a nice sturdy solid base. And then I stand, stood them up like this. Stood them all up, and I took my paper piercer, and just randomly, I don't care about center, because it's our, an artistic book, I put my paper piercer all the way through the whole um, sets, all of them together, so you have a starting hole, 
And then I took my compass and I want the circles to go big to small. So I made my compass um, the largest size that I wanted to make. I put the center of the compass into that little hole and I draw my circle. Then I adjust my compass in a little bit and move to the next page and make another circle. And then that's gonna make the holes go from large to small and create the tunnel. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking my X-Acto knife and my self-healing mat and right in the center, I'm making an X and that's where I'm going to um, start tearing out these circles because I don't want the circles to be um, perfect. I could cut them out in a perfect circle, but I want them to be jagged. So. I'm just taking the pages and I've got my pencil line and I'm tearing towards me so that it makes that nice jagged edge and I'm going as close to that circle line as I can make it. And it's okay if you go out of the lines or the papers tear odd because that's what really makes it look cool. And turn my book as I work and create that first circle and then the next one is going to be slightly smaller so you do the same thing and you just keep tearing them until you have all the circles torn out And when you do, it's going to create that beautiful tunnel. And then I'm going to decorate, which that'll be really fun. So there's going to be honeycomb and bees and whatnot. So see, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until the focal point right there. So that's in a nutshell. That's how I created my tunnel. So if you see my cute tunnel, the circles get smaller and smaller. There's all kinds of flowers and bees, and they all stack. Each page stacks to create this beautiful tunnel image. On the first page I did collage, so there's more information from that book about bees that aren't honeybees. There's, um, that is a uh, wax seal that my mom has that has bee and she let me borrow it. So I used my mom's bee wax stamp, wax seal, and then I just started to collage all kinds of bee images and use stencils and all kinds of things to just make that front B page just super fun and interesting to look at to start the tunnel. And when you turn the page, you see, you still see the stuff in the tunnel and this page is B, the change you want to see. So I love how when you flip the tunnel, then it creates circle images that um, frame in what you've got on the, on the page previous. So it's showing my collaged page with a big B. It's got a little thing down here about wild honeybees and how they build their honeycombs. The next page. And you know what, let me stop there. I wanna say something real quick. Something I haven't done yet. As you can see, when I turned that page, it sort of stuck together. I just finished this book and I haven't really done my final step, shame on me to use Gamblin Cold Wax. So this is my secret weapon. Love it, love it, love it. Um, it's cold wax medium. I've had this jar for probably five years and look at I've hardly used any, maybe a, thir uh, maybe a quarter of it. But you just take a little bit on your finger like this and you rub it on your page. So if you've got things like um, glues or Mod Podge or matte gel medium or uh, Nuvo drops or anything that that tends to make your pages stick together, just rub a little bit of the Gamblin Cold Wax on it. It doesn't change anything on your page. It doesn't move things or alter anything or add any color, it's see-through. But if you just put that on, and then it's best to take a little soft cloth to wipe it off with. I'm using this little microfiber cloth, but then you just take it and just kind of buff it like that. 
it's it's not it's dry but now look at my pages do not stick so i really need to go over all these pages with gamblin cold wax and i'll have the link for this in the description box below this is the best stuff ever for making pages not stick together and especially if you live in a climate that's got a lot of humidity so that's my next page it's got all kinds of things about bumblebees this is like um, bumblebee information instead of honeybees it's got bumblebees and I've just collaged bees in the pages um, the little pieces out of the book what I did was when I put them down with matte gel medium I let it dry then I took a palette knife and I scraped gesso over and into all the little pieces to make them kind of disappear into the background and um, not look so square like just magazine pieces cut out and put down. And then I went over it with watercolor paint and then a distress ink and look at the beautiful texture. And it just made those little informational pieces really blend in with the page. So there's more information on bumblebees. And you switch to this one and I've got pollinate the world with love. So it's done with stencils. This was a little die cut with these little um, bell flowers. And I just took a pencil and drew them similar to put more onto the page and painted them and used some color pencils so that I could make it all throughout the page. This is a um, foam stamp that I used to add just these foam stamp bees for something different. And then I, I used a paint pen to make the words pollinate the world with love. And I love how with, again, with the um, tunnel, you see into this tunnel and now you're seeing over here into this tunnel as you flip the page. This one is where does beeswax come from? So I have beeswax and chunks of beeswax on the page. Lots of neat pictures that kind of go with that. I like the back background in black it kind of made the the pieces and things I collaged onto it pop off so that's really cute and then this one how do bees make honey so there's honey jars at the bottom and I used things like um, doilies and punched out little images circles out of magazines that had interest to them like those are just magazine circles I dripped some more of that Nuvo drops on it to make honey everywhere because this is how do bees make honey. And that's just really cute. And so it's got all the information about how bees make honey. I love the little doilies, the splattery background. This one, um, how busy are bees? Are they busy? Oh, that's coming off. I need to glue that back on. Sometimes things don't stick like you'd like them to. But here's a cute little beehive, some flowers. I used Nuvos in the center to make the little black centers. This was um, a, uh, another Justine paper doll. I'll put that in the link. And it, I think that was the one for, um, I don't know, costumes or something where she's in a bee suit and she becomes a bumblebee. And I used packaging from vegetables for her little skirt that looks like beehive info and her arms move and her legs move so and this bee is on a spring so that's another fun video i'll show you that one how to make the little spring loaded bee this page this little cute bear kit was from uh, crazy fox paper on etsy the etsy store crazy fox paper and um, this was for a collaboration for crazy fox paper so i've added the the bear the legs move both the front and back legs move the arms move it's holding this cute beehive so it's got movable arms and look at that adorable um the bee the bear is called um buttercup bear and I'll put the link for Buttercup Bear from Crazy Fox Paper. And then I added this beehive to the back, the words be happy and some swirls everywhere and bees everywhere. Down here, I've got this cute little bee. This was also from uh, Crazy Fox Paper. I think the same kit and the wings move. So the little bee wings move, which is just darling. And I had this cute queen crown. It was a charm with little gems, and I put it on the bee so it makes her a queen bee. 
And I love how in the hall of the um, the last page of the tunnel, there is a bee in the hole. It just turned out so cute to have the bee showing through the hole. So I love my little buttercup bear. And when you turn this page, this one is a gnome theme. So we've got a gnome and he's got his beehive and he's a beekeeper gnome with his little smoker and he's dripping honey into, into a pot. And I put the definition of a beekeeper is a person who keeps honeybees. And so there's my beekeeper page. It's lots of collage. I collaged flowers and bees and the ground and all this to make this cute image with this gnome beekeeper. And then this page, this was a video I did, gosh, years ago, but I think I still have it on my channel. I'll hunt it up and put the link for this. This was such a fun video to do. It's on doing a mega textured background, mega textured. So this has got sequined material and bits of thread and cheesecloth and tissue paper and lace and oh my gosh there's so much stuff that creates this page look how textured and yummy this page is oh it's so pretty in person i just love it and it's shiny and sparkly and oh and it's also got um hot glue from a hot glue gun all kinds of stuff material anything that could tool there's tool in there anything that had texture i threw out this page and then in the center of it was this beautiful fuzzy bee that someone had crafted um and it's done doing uh felting doing needle felting this picture of this needle felted bee don't remember where i found that but loved it and then this cute little brad with a bee and a flower and a key on a piece of embroidery floss lifts up a hidden door and under the hidden door is a bee and some texture from um, using a uh, embossing plate. And then the little door just closes. And so that's that cute texture page. So I will put a link to that because if you want to learn how to make texture in your pages, that page just gives so much great, that video gives so much great information. So then back here in the back of the book are some pockets and they pull out. So this one has got the bees, the bumblebees, and the butterflies. So I just made that with book text and collage and all kinds of fun stuff. They're just black on the back. And they slip in behind the, behind the page. And then this one, the bumblebee's body looks so soft and fuzzy, almost as if it was made from fabric. But all Lisa uses for her animals is paper, scissors, glue, and a pair of tweezers. So what that's relating to is that article in Daphne's diary about this beautiful bee on the back. I thought that was a good thing to have on that card to show how that bee was made. And this back part is really thick with the hidden pockets for those tags. So that is my bee-themed, wonderful world of bees altered book that took me years in the making. It's finally completed. I truly love it. I hope you loved looking at it with me and that this inspires you. There's a little piece up here on the back of that Justine doll. I put a bee on the back so when it's sticking up, her head was sticking up off the page. There's a cute little bee, but it looks really cute to have that popping up out of the book. And some wings popping out and things. So there's just all kinds of fun stuff tied to the tags as material and little bits of textury stuff. So it's just super cute, super fun. I had a great time making it. And it was a labor of love that I'm glad I'm done creating. And then it closes with the chain and the bee dangling. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed and you stay tuned because I have an idea for um, my next series, I think, is going to be how to make an altered book. And the whole book is going to be using uh, Julie Nutting paper doll stamps, but it's going to be doing an altered book and using Julie Nutting stamps. So if you're interested in that, it's going to be a free series. I'm going to do 
tons of videos, little short videos in the process to show each pages. They're going to have backgrounds and all kinds of really fun techniques. So stay tuned for that. So thank you so much to everybody who uh, watches and makes nice comments. Your comments are so heartwarming to me. They, they're the reason why I love to do this. Um, and to thank you for the people who send me gifts and things off of my Amazon wish list or little donations here and there to help me buy supplies I need. I appreciate you all. So have a blessed day and keep making art because art soothes the heart. <laughs>